evening, everybody. I'm Dorothy Sturmer, daughter of Lucy and John Sturmer. Let's see. I, Polly, you're next, so I'm going to put my mask near you. <laughs> On behalf of the family, I would like to welcome you to the John Sturmer Retrospective Exhibition. It's a thrill to be here with all of you. We have several family members here, and I would like to introduce them. My sister, Michelle. Where are you, Michelle? There she is. My, <laughs> my sister, Suzanne. Where are you, Susie? OK, over here. Awesome. And from Oregon, my sister, Peggy, is with us on Zoom. <laughs> and I have my brother-in-law, Philip, back here. Yes, and we have a number of nephews and nieces. Jonathan, where is John? There's Jonathan and his daughter Brooke. Yay! <laughs> Shastine and Anthony are over in this corner. Yay! And Fred, there's Fred, all right. <laughs> and Justin and Liza. And we're thrilled to have my mom Lucy with us also. The the page the bottom. I want to start by acknowledging those folks that have made this re retrospective possible. From Western New Mexico University, we have Faye McCalmet, Special Assistant to the President. We have Jill Winburn, the Gallery Director. There she is. We have George Turner, who manages the foundation. <laughs> Laura Howell, uh, she uh, produced those beautiful uh, catalogs that I hope you all go home with. Thank you, Laura. We have um, Jay Hemphill is our photographer. And we have Michael Acosta, who is our videographer, and our musician, Al Arashe. So thank you all. All right, so I would like to introduce you to my core team. This group of people has been working together for the past six to eight months, yes, to prepare for this exhibition, but also to research and document my father's life as an artist. Yes, we, are, we care about the paintings and, and are learning about his evolution as an artist, but my father was also passionate about supporting the art community. So the team members are Paula Geisler, Maria Jensen, Madrone Madicic, and Katie, where is Katie? <laughs> You probably saw Katie um, with George at the sales table, so Katie Ritchie is there, and my sister Peggy. That is the core team that has been working so hard all these months, and I could not have done this without them. So thank you, core team. <laughs> all right. So the idea of this retrospective started several years ago. My father would have been 100 in the year 2020. And a few years ago, we thought 2020 would be a great year to have a retrospective. <laughs> of course, it didn't happen. And I'm so grateful that Faye and I kept in contact and were able to do it this year. So this summer, Paula and Faye and I were strategizing about what this retrospective would be about, what would make it special. And I don't know exactly how this came about because it just sort of formed. It came out between the two of them. The wonderful idea was to include paintings from collectors from this region. And I said, excellent idea. <laughs> because my father has paintings all over the world. Obviously, United States and Europe where they lived, but Australia and Japan and who knows where else. But a big portion of his late, especially his later work, is in private homes here in New Mexico and the Southwest region. And I thought, how wonderful it would be 
to see these paintings that normally we don't get to see because they're in private homes and share them with our community. And so I am so grateful to the collectors for their um, faith and willingness and, and trust in us to take care of their precious treasure and their generosity in sharing their paintings with the larger community. So if you are a collector who contributed to this show, raise your hand or stand up so that we can thank you for making this show extra special. Thank you. All right, so for this talk, we will be bringing you perspectives of my dad's life, uh, of our dad's life, uh, from, from various people. Paula Geisler is going to talk to you about the artistry that you see in the gallery. Uh, Marsha Tinker grew up in Elmira, as did my father, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about the nurturing art environment in New York around Elmira that spawned his, his journey through uh, an artistic life. Um, Maria Jensen is, has done a tremendous amount of research and writing, and she'll share a few of her impressions uh, about my dad from her own perspective. George Turner is going to talk to us about the um, John Sturmer Scholarship. And he, uh, as you know, he's been at the sales table, and I need to remind you that Sales are going to close at 7.15 so that they can wrap up by 7.30. Um, and then I'm going to open it up to questions and comments and dialogue with everybody. And um, then we'll conclude this reception. And everybody is invited to join us at the Murray Hotel Ballroom right after this reception. And we'll continue the, the conversation and good cheer with food and all kinds of other things. Um, and uh, so at this point, Paula, I'm going to hand it over to you. It's dangerous to put a person like me in front of a microphone, so I'm setting the timer. So I also have to take this off, oh my god. One moment, please. Did I say a cuss word? I'm so sorry. One moment, please. I don't think I need this. I'm just going to take the whole thing off. Oh, it got really quiet in here. <laughs> Duh. Um, it's wonderful to see so many people I know. Thank you so much for coming. This is a visual feast in here. There's a culinary feast outside. I hope you enjoy both. I hope you have a favorite piece. Their price, uh, the green dots, probably you already know that. That means work is for sale. There's a price list there. We made copies if anybody wants some of those. So yeah, on the radio, I'm used to having notes in front of me. I'm, I'm going to have to read because I'll forget what I'm talking about. So I have a question. I want to start it out with a question. What do you think art is for, really, besides looking good over your couch or something like that? Art is to argue about. Art is to discuss in a civilized way pros and cons about imagery. You know, what, what is it about this? Oh, well, you like that. I like something that's a little more abstract. I like the more realistic. That is the dialogue that art is supposed to make happen. So that's a good thing. I mean, disagreement is, we need to practice that a little bit. Um, so um, the exhibit is the best of both worlds. We have, we're gonna magically designate the small space a fine art museum. It's a museum. It has storyboards. You can read about the art. You can exercise your left brain skills, linear, sequential. Hmm, I want to buy that piece. How do I make that happen? <laughs> or something like that. Whereas as soon as you step into this big space, this soaring space, which I'll talk about later in the, um, the North Light, is so great. The art is communicating through colors and shapes. And the title, if you want to look at it. But your imagination is at least 51% of your relationship with a piece of artwork. It's the associations you bring to it, and they're private. You don't have to tell anybody what that makes remind you of. 
you know, that yuppa is just like the one out front. When you walk outside after the show tonight, you will see that yucca. John taught up here, he may have painted that one. I mean, they all kind of look alike, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, but I want you to look at it. So I know for a fact, for putting this show together, that this show springs from the hearts of the Sturmers. It springs from John. He is alive today through his art. It springs from Lucy, who's alive today and with us. It springs from the children. It is their gift to us. And we want to thank you for that. It's a beautiful gift you're sharing with us. Thank No, it's supposed to. I haven't talked for eight minutes already. Have <laughs> okay, uh, I'm moving right along. Um, okay, so we're, we're grateful. This, this is their gift to us. By the way, the show, thanks to Western, the show is going to be open from November the 22nd. That's Monday through December the 9th, the day school is over, five days a week, Monday through Friday, noon to four o'clock. You don't have to write it down, you'll remember that. I will be here most of those days. Thanksgiving, we won't be open, so one day Thursday we won't be. But next week, Monday through Wednesday, and then again on Friday, if you come in here at noon, I'll be here. I might not be primped up, but I'll be here, and uh, I'd like to visit with you. Um, so I'm grateful about that. Um, when you see John's artwork, there's not one downer painting. I know John's work. Everything he painted shows you his positive emotional relationship with the image. Whether it's a beautiful form of a female, he did love the female form, whether it's the plant kingdom, the mountains, uh, I don't know how I felt about me, but anyway, <laughs> I do, I do. So, but anyway, that positive emotional relationship is, I hope, what you feel when you look at John's work. That's what he wants you to, he didn't paint downer stuff. He didn't paint heavy, sad stuff. I'm kind of glad. Um, so anyway, I, I know when you were in the smaller space, you saw the boxer, the guy with the bloody nose. Didn't you see that one? It's funny. That guy, it looks like he's having a really good time. Uh, John was trained as a pugilist. I mean, you know, bam, his hands were dangerous. You know, he could make art and he could also knock you out. But uh, I'm sure that that boxer was a friend of his. And probably John said, oh, I rarely get to use the color red. I love your bloody nose. Don't move. Hold still. I'm sure that guy's a friend of his. And John kind of had that noble combat mindset. You know, I think it's what gave him grit. I like that about him. Anyway, um, you local collectors, the lifeblood of the show. I mean, the, we, you're the core that everything is about. And thank you so much for that. So people said, how much more time do I have? Okay, people said, what about those lines of force? What does that mean? Well, I painted with John a lot. We both went to the same kind of school. I did not go to the prestigious Art Students League, but I went to a similar school that's, you could not graduate if you could not draw a person, period. You could not graduate. You had to understand form, and form is it moved in space. And so those lines of force, those gestures, sometimes they're not a straight line or something like that. It might be a curving arched line, but those energies resonate throughout all of John's compositions. And um, by the time, most of the work back here, except for the collector's wall, most of the work back here is John's late work. It's the work where he had, I say, he had, he had gotten to the top of the mountain. He had gotten to the top. He had achieved what is more important than fame and fortune to an artist. He had arrived at his own unique style. When you see a John Sturmer, you know it's a John Sturmer, don't you? I mean, the style, some in the early work, even in the, little, the church, in the, in the early formative years, you can see those lines of force spiraling up to the sky. I think his, his uh, faith was very important to him as well. So... I hope that people here will make a game of switching between left brain, linear, sequential thought as you look at the work, and the right brain. 
I mean, what's the point of having a bicameral brain if we don't use both sides of it? You know, let, let the colors and the shapes, and look at the title, that'll give you a, an opening, a portal into it. Let your right brain, and go back and forth, just make a game of it. So, I think I've said just about everything. Uh, if you have a favorite painting, we'd love it if you'd let us know what it is. I always used to, when I, when I ran this gallery a thousand years ago, we'd always have a People's Choice Award because you just never know what's, what people are gonna resonate with. So for the, for the talk at the end of the show, if y'all wanna do a formal critique, okay, 30 seconds more. I printed out a bunch of copies of the formal critique, and if y'all would want to, we can go through this. I will put it, where should I put it, so people can get a copy if they want it. Thank you so much. I believe Marsha is now, Tinker is, she's one of the collectors, and she's gonna talk about John's uh, formative years. So thank you, Marsha, okay. Hi, it's September 2018. A funny thing happened to me on the way to Silver City. Brian, my partner, and I have visited Silver a couple of times. In a few weeks, we were to travel there to decide if we should move there. We were living in our hometown region of upstate New York near Elmira. It's Saturday morning. I'm an antique dealer and collector, and there's an estate sale. I go and I gather a pile of good stuff. Upstairs, I, I spot two paintings in the narrow, dark hallway. Hard to see, but are matching and maybe interesting. Add them to my pile, pay, and go home. I'm also a historian and an artist. I do a little research. Signed, John Sturmer, 1952, with titles. Now in good light, glass cleaned, I see nice watercolors and professionally framed by the art shop, Elmira, New York. I Google John Sturmer and holy cats. <laughs> Elmira native and lived in Silver City. I find a website, a Facebook page, and learn a little bit about the artist and his wife, Lucy, the past mayor of Silver City. I contacted Sturmer Fine Art and became acquainted with Dorothy and Peggy. They were not only glad to hear from me, but put us in touch with Smith Realty and their friend Paula. October, we made it to Silver, two weeks, fell in love with a dilapidated old adobe, and moved the next spring with our two Sturmers. I remained in contact with Dorothy and Peggy and was thrilled when they announced the retrospective that might include our paintings. So John Sturmer and Almira, one might not expect a major art scene in the small upstate city of Elmira, John Sturmer's hometown. It has been active since the 1800s for art, music, and literature. Matthias Arnott traveled to Europe extensively to bring art back to Elmira. Upon his death in 1910, he left his stately red brick mansion to the community along with a superb collection of Flemish and French paintings. The Elmira Art Club was formed in the late 1800s. Oh, and by the way, Mark Twain and his in-laws, Harriet Beecher Stowe, also came from Elmira. <laughs> and Eileen Collins. <laughs> Sturmer's interest in art stemmed from a young age and found many opportunities in the Elmira art world. Well-known artist, Ernfred Anderson, was Sturmer's high school art teacher. As a young man, Sturmer studied under Lars Hoftrup. Swedish immigrant Hoftrop came to Elmira in 1879 at age six. His family came to Elmira to work in the steel mills and started the family farm. Hoftrop became an accomplished painter, traveling throughout Europe, had studios in New York City and the Midwest. He returned to Elmira in 1932 with artist companion Armand Varney. They, along with Art Abrams, started the Rustic Studio, later known as Artstorp, near Elmira on Hoftrop's farm. Artstorps became a mecca for American artists who came to study and talk with Hoftrop and Varney. 
Such visitors were Grant Wood and Marsden Hartley. So in Elmira, John Sturmer had rewarding and nurturing artistic connections well before attending the Art Student League. In 1950, John Sturmer had his first one-man show at the Arna Art Museum, and the director of the museum at that time was Ernfred Anderson. In 1952, John and Lucy Sturmer traveled to Europe with Lars Hoftrup. My estate sale paintings were painted during that period in France. It's the, the top one with the green dot. <laughs> Along with the serendipity of John Sturmer, Elmira, and Silver City, my mother worked at the Elmira Art Shop, owned by Art Abrams, in the 1950s, and she may have framed that. <laughs> my grandfather, Harry Butters, was also an Elmira watercolorist, and he took me to, oh, and was friends with Hoftrop Anderson and frequently took me to the Arna Art Museum. When packing to move, I came across a copy of the Arna Art Museum catalog, 1978, Hoftrop Varney Retrospective. Scanned it and discovered the connection that John Sturmer had with the two artists. Recently, through the same catalog, Dorothy was able to ID a painting in her guest room, which she knew as the Vagrant, turned out to be a portrait of Varney that Sturmer painted for the U.S. State Department Exhibition of American Artists. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Maria Jensen, the researcher. Hi, I'm um, really excited to talk about what I um, really took away from all the research I did. It was an honor and um, a pleasure to have access to all the materials from John Stimmer's life, from letters that he um, and Lucy had received over the years, um, the newspaper clippings, um, and other forms of material I was able to access, as well as people who um, were in his life that are still here, like Lucy. So I did some wonderful interviews. And one of the things that really struck me was a multi-dimensional uh, way that he had, or how he seemed to be so brilliant in more than one way. So by being willing to not just, not, I don't want to say just be the artist, but not be strictly an artist, and stepping out of his studio and fulfilling these different roles. So one of the things he was also was a very, admired or very sought after art teacher. And in teaching art, it took him to Carlsbad, New Mexico. He went to Reserve, New Mexico as an adjunct instructor with WNMU and taught the housewives of ranchers. And some of them were actually, I did some research and found out that they were artists in their own right, on their own journeys. So by putting himself out there, he was able to help them along, you know, and um, that was, very unselfish, I think, because he really believed in everybody's, uh, anybody who wanted to be creative, he seemed to give them space because of the way he learned at the Art Student League, <clears throat> um, which had a lot to do with allowing people to find their own style. So he brought that into the classroom as a teacher as well. Um, let's see. So as a community leader, he founded and was the president of the Silver City Art Council, which started in 1980 or so. And the whole mission of that was to bring in arts so that just average citizens could access them. So a lot of it was the performing arts. Queen Ida was here in the 80s. The New Mexico State Orchestra was here in the 80s. And a lot of other big names. He had a way of being able to reach out and connect with them and. and speak to them and say, come on down to this tiny little town that no one's ever heard of. Come on a show. <laughs> and uh, I saw the ad for the Queen Ida show at the time. It was $5. <laughs> so even for then, I think that was right, very affordable and wonderful to have that opportunity. So of course, he was also a New Mexico um, arts commissioner and did a lot of good work there, too. So again, he could have stayed in his studio and just like, here's my art, here's my family, you know. But he, he wanted to bring that artistic experience to everyone. Um, and being a, 
hardworking, valued employee. He was at the mine. Um, it was Phelps, or before Phelps Dodge Kennecott. The whole time, from when he first got here, about 1959, until his health crisis, when he had to retire. He was a valued employee the whole time, still doing art, and yet he was still the husband and the father, his, and the father whose daughters adore him to this day. So if you just look at all those different as areas of his life, those different facets, and see how accomplished he was and how successful he was in all of them, that just, that's a lot for one person in one life. So that, that made a big impression on me to, um, to have that awareness. And I'm just thankful because I think that he did contribute to making a foundation here for Silver City to be what it is today as far as the arts. His father was very working class, um, blue collar type, worked on the railroad and thought that's what John should do. John Sturmer, you need to go get a job at the railroad. And um, thankfully, others like Hart Lance, now I'm gonna get the name, Lars Hoptrup and others saw the potential there got him to enroll in the Art Students League, and thankfully he met and married Lucianne Thornton. And thankfully he made his way to Silver City, a little mountain town that a lot of people hadn't heard of, and some people still haven't, <laughs> <laughs> and called it home. And so here we are. So, thank you. George, George Turner is now gonna speak from the Scholarship Foundation. Hello everybody, uh, my name is George Turner. I am the scholarship coordinator for uh, Western New Mexico University Foundation Office. Um, I just would like to first say thank you to the Sturmer family for allowing us to be here, the foundation, um, to be able to just talk about uh, the John Sturmer Art Scholarship. Um, so the foundation, of course, is for the students and we're here to support the university through private donations and scholarship purposes. Um, the John Sturmer Art Scholarship actually was an, um, established back in 1997 by Lucy. And the scholarship itself over the years has been able to grow, it's endowed. And so each year it does give off a portion to the students. And so we would just like to again say thank you for allowing the foundation to be able to keep his legacy alive through that scholarship. And what, what I'm here to just let y'all know is that any of the sales tonight, a portion of the proceeds will go to benefit the Foundation Scholarship in John Sturmer's name, as well as back to the Sturmer Art LLC, and uh, a couple of other different um, areas of, of need. Um, so again, I just would like to just say thank you uh, for being here, and for myself, just hearing the stories and learning more about John is such a thrill. Uh, I've only been at the foundation for three years, and a lot of these scholarships that were created, um, there aren't individuals that are alive to be able to you know, tell us the stories about who these individuals are so that we can just keep their name alive. So um, I'd just like to say thank you again, and if you are interested in any um, purchasing anything, we will be out there um, at the sales table. So, thank you. Until 7.15. I mean, if we can go, if we want to go a little longer, we can, okay? So, but, yes. Uh, yes, um, purchases of anything on the wall is available um, through contacting George or, or Faye. If you're interested in a gicle or one of the charcoals or the note cards or the poster, I will need to take those back with me to Albuquerque. So I left my business card on the table, just contact me. And because it's related to this show, Western will still get uh, their percentage. So until the end of this year, because I have to do my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so do I just pop this out? Okay, so this actually does not amplify. It's for uh, recording the video, but um, now that we're gonna have the open session for dialogue and comments and questions, which um, any of the panelists can, 
can help me answer. Um, I would like to bring this to you for your question or comment. Yes, sir. I have a question on Zoom. Will sales be available after tonight? Should they contact the foundation or yourself? Uh, best to contact the foundation, contact the foundation. <laughs> unless they want to buy, well, contact the foundation and they'll contact me if it's one of the others. That's much easier. Contact the foundation. All right. Um, comments, collectors, what do you think, or any new people here? Could you say that again? I would like to know. She didn't. I didn't catch her name and what she does. Maria Jensen. I'm Maria Jensen. And in the project, or did what I do in life is a. Oh, a researching and writing, like interviewing, uh, reviewing primary source materials, and then I compose um, blurps and uh, the narratives for them to work with to make the storyboard. Very good. Anybody else? Okay, I want to make sure everybody knows that uh, collectors and Western New Mexico University folks and my core team, I have something special for you at the after party at the Murray Hotel and everybody is invited to that. We have lots of food and we'd just love to have, have the conversation continue. So thank you very much and thank you for coming tonight. It's been such a pre pleasure and thank you again to the collectors. Woo!